Welcome everyone to section number seven. This is triple integrals, our first day of them. In this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about, right, what are these things triple integrals good for? Uh, and then we're gonna get a little bit of practice, right? And we are, uh, as it says here, leaving the comfort of the world of easy drawings, right? And we're venturing into the world of triple integrals, right? It's kind of, it's hard to draw kind of these three-dimensional regions in general, but we're gonna get some good practice. And as you remember, for double integrals, first we did rectangular regions, and then we kind of upgraded to general regions. As it says here, right, there is no warm-up section where we just have the rectangular solids. We're going straight for these general regions. Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk about, right, is why do we care about triple integrals, right? What are they actually useful for, right? And so the first thing, or actually, let me back up for a second. In double integrals, right, we know that they were good at finding volume. Right. We also saw that they're good at finding areas and, you know, calculating out masses and quite a few things. Right. But really, I mean, when you think about, OK, we're good at calculating out volumes then what are really these triple integrals right, used for? Right. So these things are kind of initially they're they're a little bit more confusing. Uh, if you just were to integrate, right, it would tell you instead of a volume, some like four dimensional volume under a three dimensional shape. And that's hard to recognize. Right. But the claim is they do have real world uses. Uh, so one thing is like they will help us count bees or other bee-like substances. I promise I will elaborate uh, later on this. They will actually help us find volumes of 3D regions, right? This is gonna actually be an analog, right? So when you have found an area of a 2D region, right? In the same way, we're gonna be able to use triple integrals to actually find the volume of a 3D region. Uh, and then also we're gonna be able to find a mass of a given you know, 3D density function. So we've already practiced a little bit with two-dimensional uh, density functions. So if I give you a three-dimensional density function, we should be able to calculate the mass of you know, that object. All right, so I'm starting to feel a little bit better, right? These things will have uses. So let me give us a theorem, right? Uh, originally, we had something that said, right, the area, if we have a nice closed bounded planar region R, right, the area was actually this double integral, right? If we integrated just really one here, right, there's the secret one dy dx, that that would give us area. Now, in a similar sort of format, right, if you want volume, for a nice closed bounded region in space, right? So we're calling this thing E now. So our region is E. So this is gonna be the triple integral over E of, again, there's a secret one here and you can do dz dy dx, right? So we're gonna integrate with all three of these things with respect to z, then with respect to y, then with respect to x. And as we saw in section number three, right, when we started switching the orders of these things, we will also be doing that here for triple integrals. You want to be able to switch these things around a little bit. So we will get to that here in a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and I want to solve a particular problem. So in this case, notice we no longer have DAs, but we have DVs, right? So this is now a small change in volume to go along with these triple integrals. And just as before, right, so the most classic one is gonna be this dz dy dx sort of deal, but there's gonna be the Fubini's theorem and we can kind of alter this order of integration. So I would like to evaluate out this integral. So here's our function, x, y, z, plus one, right? And where e is the rectangular solid, Right, so x ranges from one to five, y ranges from two to three, and z ranges from negative two to zero. So let's go ahead and calculate this out. And basically, right, if you like single integrals, or if you like double integrals, right, it's just gonna be a little bit more, right? So we're gonna do this three times. We're gonna have triple integrals. So I'm gonna go ahead and write, right, the triple integral of x, y, z, this is over the region E here, plus one, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use kind of the most natural maybe order of integration, which is when you use dz, dy, dx. But if you'd like to, right, you can change it up a little bit. There is a Fubini's theorem for triple integral. So if you wanna do dx, dy, dz, or dy, dx, dz, right, any combination of these things, it's pretty easy over these nice rectangular solids here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and specify our limits of integration. So if I'm doing dz first, that means my z's are gonna be from negative two to zero, and then I'm doing dy, y's are from two to three, and then I'm doing x. So dx, x's are from one to five, 
Again, I'm integrating x, y, z plus 1. So let's go ahead and evaluate out our z integral. So these guys are along for the ride here, 1 to 5, 2 to 3. And when I integrate x, y, z with respect to z, right, I'm going to have, let's see, x, y, z squared all over 2. So go ahead, if you take the derivative of this with respect to z, you should get back to where you started, plus z. And again, I'm evaluating this from negative 2 to 0. And I still have to integrate with respect to y and with respect to x here in just a second. Okay, so again, these things are along for the ride. I sometimes feel like the longest part of this is just, you know, rewriting things here. So, okay, if I plug in 0, okay, that'll be very nice, right? All of this will go away. And so then I need to subtract away when I plug in negative 2. So when I plug in negative 2 and I square that, I'm going to get positive 4 divided by 2. So that's going to be 2xy. And then when I plug in negative 2 for a z here, I'm just going to have negative 2. Again, I need to integrate with respect to y and then with respect to x. All right, so let me do kind of two steps in one here. So I want to integrate this with respect to y, and I'd like to go ahead and distribute that negative sign. So when I distribute that negative, let's see, we're going to get a negative here and we're going to get a positive here. So let's go ahead and just erase that and do so negative 2xy plus 2. So now when I integrate this, I'm going to get negative xy squared. Again, if I take the derivative of this with respect to y, I should get back to where I started here, plus 2y. And I'm going to evaluate this from, let's see, y equals 2 to y equals 3. And again, I have to evaluate my x integral here in just a second. So let's go ahead and do that. If I plug in 3, let's see, I'm going to get negative 9x, uh, let's see, plus 6. And then I subtract away when I plug in 2. So I'm going to have negative 4x plus 4. There we go, integrating with respect to x. Let's take one line to simplify here. So let's see, I have negative 9x, and then this looks like plus 4x, so that's going to be negative 5x. And then here I have 6 minus 4, so that's going to be 2. Again, I'm integrating with respect to x. So if I do that, I'm going to have negative 5 halves x squared plus 2x, evaluating that from 1 to 5. And again, if I take the derivative of this with respect to x, I should get back to where I started. Plug these things in. I'm going to have negative 5 halves times 25 plus 10 minus, and when I plug in 1, I'm going to have negative 5 halves plus 2. And so let's see, this is going to be negative 125 halves plus 10 plus 5 halves minus 2. So that's going to be 8, right? The 10 and the negative 2 make 8. And then this is going to be negative 120 halves negative 120 halves. So that's going to be the same thing as 8 minus 60. So I believe I get negative 52 when all is said and done. All right, so as you can see, these can certainly be long problems. And in fact, in this case, this is one of the easiest cases, right? So we just have a nice rectangular solid. We will be upgrading these and we'll be able to do kind of more general regions uh, in class. All right, so that's it. We have a little bit of practice. Uh, we have some uses for these things. Uh, I'll see you guys in class, and good luck.